بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وقدوتنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلاة وأسكى تسليم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا رب العالمين We're doing the tafsir of Surah Al-An'am We've reached around the 111th ayah And one of the main points of Surah Al-An'am that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to understand is that the rejection of revelation the rejection of Allah's guidance, the rejection of his signs, whether it takes the form of kufr or the more specific form of kufr, which is shirk, is not a cognitive issue, not a primarily cognitive issue. It's not about how smart you are. It is an issue of the heart. It is about how sincere you are. It is about how moral and ethical you are, which is why Allah Azza wa he says, وَلَوْ أَنَّنَا نَزَّلْنَا إِلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ وَكَلَّمَهُمُ الْمَوْتَ وَحَشَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ قُبَلَا مَا كَانُوا لِيُؤْمِنُوا إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ يَجَهَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, even if we sent down to them an angel, recall this was one of their phony demands, one of their excuses, oh, we don't want a prophet, we want you to send us an angel. Allah says, even if we sent them an angel, or even if we allowed the dead to speak to them, or if we gathered everything for them, they wouldn't believe except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed. No, rather, most of them are ignorant. In this way, Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is about to account for the existence of something. He says, we have placed for every prophet enemies, enemies among the shayateen, al-insi wal-jinn, mean human devils and devils from among the jinn. They help each other and they speak to each other and they delude each other, zukhraf al-qawli ghurura, with beautified, literally golden words. Golden, deluded words. وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ مَا فَعَلُوا And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had wanted, He wouldn't have allowed it to happen. Yet, Al-Hakim, the All-Wise, Allah Azza decided that this would happen, that this type of confusion would happen, this type of argumentation. You've got some people doing the devil's work, right? Hizb shaitan People, or Weswas, the suggestions that you find within your own soul. And the reason that he has allowed it to happen is to demonstrate what's on your insides. Because if you have on your inside sincerity, if you have on your inside faith, the virtue, then yes, you will make mistakes, but more times than not, you're going to follow the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends. And you're going to resist the whispers. You're going to resist the bad influences. You're going to resist the delusions or the justifications or the rationalizations that the demons give you. But for people who have the sickness in their heart already, this is what they've been waiting for. They want to hear the West West. They want to hear the suggestions. They want to hear the delusions. They want to be provided the rationalization. So then once it comes along, they can latch onto it and say, ah, yes. See, I knew what I was doing was okay. I knew that I could live my life without faith. I knew that I could live my life without thinking about being accountable to anyone or to anything. This is how misguidance works. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had willed it, he wouldn't have let it happen. Yet, he allowed it to happen to demonstrate what he already knew. Because when it comes to your heart and my heart and everybody's heart and what they would decide, how they would react, Allah already knows. He didn't have to do it for his own benefit so that he knew something he wasn't already aware of. But he makes the hidden manifest to prove it to everybody else. So that we, we get on the day of judgment and we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he gives us our final judgment. He shows us our deeds. اعتراف. He makes us confess. You did this. We have to say yes. 
We don't have an argument. We can't say, well, uh, but if you had only given me this different situation. No, no, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the situation, gave us every opportunity, and we're going to get what we deserve. This is exactly what we're talking about. Allah says, Li, okay, the lamb that he's using here is lamb ta'lil. Okay, lamb ta'lil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining the reason why he let this happen. Why did he let the demons run amok, right? Be able to confuse people, be able to provide these arguments, bad influences among the people, bad influences with these suggestions and these whisperings. Why? So that the people who don't believe in the afterlife, their hearts would incline towards it. And Allah Azza wa Jal puts this front and center time and time again. It's interesting. You would think somebody, an outside observer would think, okay, well, the Quran would usually say, believing in Allah, believing in Allah, believing in Allah. And it's true. Allah says that a lot in the Quran. But a surprising amount of times, instead of saying, yu'minuna billah, he says, yu'minuna bil-akhirah. Here, the people who don't believe in the afterlife. What's the first sifa, the first description of the muttaqun in Surah Al-Baqarah? Interesting. The first thing he says is not yu'minuna billah. He says yu'minuna bil-ghayb. The one who believes in the unseen. Because believing in the unseen and the afterlife is part of the unseen has to do with hisab, has to do with accountability. You know that you're going to be held to account. You know you're going to be held responsible for what you did. All piety, all taqwa, all responsibility, all faith is based off of accountability. We need it. If you don't have accountability, you're going to do whatever you want. And that's just the reality. How many think about your job? For those of you who have a boss, if your boss never, ever, ever came in to work, how tempting would it be to slack off? How hard would it be to discipline yourself so that every single, I mean, all of us have shortcomings. Imagine, are you going to tell me that every single second that you're on the clock is dedicated to your work? You never once looked at your phone. You never once shot a message. You never once scrolled Facebook or something like this when you're on the clock. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only boss that has complete knowledge of what his workers are doing. Right? And so we need that accountability. We need to have some sort of accountability so that we act right. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here that the people who don't believe in accountability... And if you, can't, if you don't believe in the afterlife, you can't believe in any accountability. No real accountability. Your heart's going to lean. It's going to lean towards these suggestions, towards these demons, towards these demonic forces and these influences. You only live once. It's your body. It's your choice. Get out there and live a little. Relax. Loosen up. You only live once. Let's go. If you don't believe in accountability, your heart's going to lean towards that and eventually you're going to find the justification you were looking for. And so that they would be pleased with it. And so that they would be able to commit that which they were already resolved upon committing. SubhanAllah. <laughs> the way that Allah phrases it. He uses a verb, then he uses a noun. Okay? So the verb in, in Arabic, it symbolizes tajdeed. It's something that maybe I'm doing it right now, but I can stop whenever I want. Maybe two minutes later, I'm done. But the noun is something that this person is resolved to do it. Okay? And so Allah says, He says, So that they can do verb or commit that which they are doers of. Meaning what they are already resolved to do. Should other than Allah, I want hakaman? Should I want anyone other than Allah as a judge? 
And he is the one who sent down the book in Fusul, piece by piece, slowly. This is part of Allah's wisdom and one of the benefits of being a Muslim, not belonging to the earlier communities of faith. When Bani Israel received the Torah, when Musa alayhi salam went on Turi Sinin, it was all given to him at once. Tablets. Khalas. There's no jidal. There's no there, there, really. There's no tadarruj, right? There's no tadarruj. Khalas. <laughs> That's right. You either have yani fashil wa najih. That's it. You succeed or fail. You have everything right in front of you right there. Imagine the entire sharia coming down at once. Very difficult. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was merciful with us. He gave us tadarruj. He gave us bit by bit by bit, 23 years, subhanah, 23 years to get used to it. No alcohol, no illicit relationships, giving up riba, right? Changing our, the way that we think about things. 23 years, very, very generous. And this is attested to by Aisha radiallahu anha, who said that if we had been asked from the beginning to give up khamar wa zina, we would not have accepted it. That's the words of Aisha, your mother. Radiallahu anha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gave the kitab mufassala. He gave it piece by piece. Do you want anyone other than this creator as your judge? Subhanah. Look at how merciful he was. He didn't have to give it to you piece by piece. He didn't have to take it easy with you. Do you would you want anyone other than him as a judge? No, of course, he's the most merciful. The ones who came before you, the ones who were given revelation before you, they already know. They already know that this Quran, this revelation was sent from your sustainer in truth. So don't be of those who doubt. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us an aqaida. He gives us a principle to apply throughout our entire lives. He says, وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدَلًا Allah's word has already come to pass. Okay? لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِ وَهُوَ سَمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّوكَ If you were to follow the majority of people on earth, you would go astray. Majority rule, democracy, no, 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 no. Allah says, if you were to follow the majority, you would go astray. Uh, he says, يُضِلُّوكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Particularly, they would divert you from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِيَّ تَبِعُونَ إِلَّا الظَّنْ The majority of people aren't doing anything but following assumptions and conjecture. Just scroll through social media and you'll figure that out real quick. Look through your Facebook feed. Look through your TikTok or your Instagram. The majority of stuff that's out there. It's about manifesting this, and it's about zodiac sign that, and crystals, and madriyesh, all this nonsense. If you were to take, we used to have a joke when we were in the jam, you know, we were in Medina. You know, people come on hajj for the first time. The last thing you want to do, we used to joke, we said, oh, don't worry about it. hajj is easy. Just look around you and do what everybody else is doing. It's the worst way to learn how to make hajj because you'll see everything. You'll see people, you know, not even dressed appropriately. You see people, people cutting their hair right there on Safa and Marwa. You see people doing things out of order. You see all sorts of craziness. The worst thing that you can do is just not have a plan. As somebody said, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. You need to have a plan going into it. You need to know what you're going to do so that when you see the majority of people doing something else, you're not going to be shook. You're not going to be influenced. We know as Muslims, and this is especially important for the youth. I tell them in Sunday school, drugs, alcohol, no. Completely ruins your ability to see Allah's signs. So then when they get out into the school, or they get out into the, the real world with their friends, their coworkers, you don't drink. If you're not ready for that moment, you're going to feel guilty. You're going to feel embarrassed. You're going to be like, oh, well, you know, I guess it's not so bad. But if you've been prepared, if you have a plan, and you say, no, I don't drink, get out of here. 
Get that stuff away from me. Are you nuts? Waste your money, waste your mind. That's the difference. You have to have a plan so that you're not deluded by what other people are doing. The majority of people do this. Well, everybody else is doing this. Everybody else is doing that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, don't look to what the majority of people are doing, especially when it comes to your faith. You follow the majority of people, you're going to be led astray. This does not apply to within our ummah or within the scholars, okay? Because we have the jumhur, right? The, the majority opinion we talk about in fiqh. This applies to anas, all the people. If you look at what all the people are doing, they fall into kufr over here, they fall into shirk over here, they fall into bid'ah over here. This is what they're doing. Because most people follow what's convenient and what they like, their ahwa, their desires, their attachments in this world. I want to just jump back just a little bit because there's an ayah, there's a couple ayat in Surah Al-An'am that some people misinterpret with an agenda. We've talked about some of those before. One of them is the verse that we just passed, وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدِقًا وَعَدَلًا لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِ Some people use this phrase, لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِ There is no changing Allah's words. Or is literally, there is no changer of Allah's words. Nobody can change Allah's words. So some people come along and they say, well, there's no such thing as نَسْخْ, as abrogation. And this is a false interpretation of this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ability to replace one ayah with another. He says that in Surah Al-Baqarah. مَا نَنْسَخْ مِنْ آيَةٍ Right? There's an entire ayah about it. Allah Azza wa Jal has the ability to replace one rule with another. And we've talked before, and it bears mentioning again, why is abrogation or nesq not a contradiction? Because the entire revelation can be broken up into two groups. You have sharia over here, and you have aqidah over here. Aqidah has to do with reality. There is one God. There are prophets. There is revelation. There is life after death. There are angels. These sorts of things. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to tell you two different things or contradictory things in aqidah, that's a contradiction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never told one community, worship a trinity, and then told the community later, actually, it's just one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never told people there are no angels, and then told another group of people, actually, no, there's angels. That would be a contradiction. Sharia, on the other hand, is not to do with reality. It has to do with maslaha. It has to do with what benefits human beings. And what benefits human beings, even though there's lots of continuity from time to time and place to place, there are some things that might differ. Big example, Adam and Hawa, okay, they have children. How are their children going to reproduce? Huh? Yeah. By marrying each other. Is that halal for us? <laughs> no. Kalla. Okay. They were in a situation. They had their own sharia. Allah says this in Surah Al-Ma'idah. To each one of you, meaning aqwam, meaning qawm, every nation he gave a, sh a shir'a, he gave a specific law, wa min haja, and a way. So you will find there are differences from nation to nation when it comes to their sharia. The sharia of Bani Israel, the Jews, is different from our sharia. We don't say that all of their sharia, all these differences is just tahrif. No, some of the stuff is different. When the Christians, the sharia that was given to Isa, alayhi salam, is different from our sharia. The sharia that was given to Adam and to his children, or Nuh, alayhi salam, is different from our sharia. But this is not a contradiction, that there are differences in between them. Because the rules do not have to do with what is reality. The rules have to do with what Allah wants from us, how we should deal with that reality. And that might differ slightly from time to time and place to place. Which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started us off allowing us to drink alcohol in the first maybe 13 years of the tanzil, and then eventually banned it, okay? This was abrogation. He replaced the rule of not, excuse me, the rule of allowance with the rule of prohibition. And that is not a contradiction whatsoever. So you cannot use this ayah to say that Allah doesn't have replace one rule with another or something like this. That is not what Allah Azza wa meant by that.
وهو سميع العليم وإن تطيع أكثر من في الأرض يضلوك عن سبيل الله If you follow the majority of people on earth, they will divert you from the path of Allah. They only are following their conjecture, their assumptions. They don't have firm principles. And if you corner anybody who doesn't have a firm theological basis for what they believe, it's all ashwai, it's all fawda, it's all chaos. They don't have a consistent regime of principles. You talk to a vegan. Okay, you guys know what a vegan is, right? Somebody who doesn't eat any animals or any animal products. Okay, well, you say, well, <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you eat this? Well, you know, because it's cruelty to animals to kill. Okay, go to your cereal box. You know how many hasharat died to get you that cereal ba box? You know how many squirrels and rabbits and other sort of animals get caught up in the turbines when they're collecting cereal? Okay, there's still animals that die when, they, when you produce your cereal. Or you talk to people now, they say that relationships, it's all just about consent. MashaAllah. So if a brother and a sister consent to marry, then that's okay. Right? If somebody who's getting abused by their spouse consents to it, that's okay. By your logic, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa qalilan ma yu'minun. Which is a beautiful double meaning. They believe only a little, and it also means how few are the things that they believe in. They ask any people on the street, what do you actually believe in? Very, very few. Th they, they can't, they'll be, only be able to give you a few things. You talk to a Muslim who knows even just a little bit about their faith. I believe in Allah. I believe in the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I believe in the messengers before him. I believe in the books. I believe in the Quran and the Injil and the Torah and the Zabur and the Suhuf Ibrahim. Right? I believe in the afterlife and the Barzakh and the Hisab and I believe in this and I believe in that. That's belief. That's actually submission, Islam. That's having something outside of yourself that you is thiqa, is something that is holding you down, giving you gravity. Anybody else that doesn't have this, then it's just wham. <laughs> like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compares to their deeds. It's just like straw. You blow it away. Light, khafif. It's nothing. <laughs> they believe in very, very few things. So if you follow the majority of people, you're going to go astray. They're only following conjecture, assumption. inhum illa yakhrusun. Allah then says, Inna rabbaka. So right after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't follow the majority, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often in the Quran responds to what the reader might be thinking. The reader might be thinking, well, what's wrong with what the majority is doing? Allah says, he knows best who's guided. Meaning you can't look to the majority of people and assume that you can tell who is doing right and who is doing wrong, or even that you assume we see this today all the time. You see TikTok, you see Instagram. You've got this Muslim couple and that da'i and that da'i. And then a year passes, two years pass. You find out they had skeletons in their closet. They were doing horrible stuff behind the scenes. They were fake. They were just getting money, just getting rich. You don't know who's guided. You don't really know. You look. You see the big beard, you see the big belly, you think this is the mawla, right, or the mufti, <laughs> right? You don't know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this is ilm al-ghaib, this is something that is from the unseen, okay? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hujurat, when he says, inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum, the best of you in the sight of Allah are the most pious, and then Allah finishes the ayah, inna allaha alimun khabir, and Allah is the only one who knows. And he uses alimun, which encompasses things that are jahra and not things that are out in the open, knowledge that anybody can know and things that are khufya, things that are hidden. And then he says khabir. I think I need a battery change. And then he says khabir, informed. Khabar is information. It's not something that you can figure out by yourself. It's not something that you can know by yourself. It's something that's hidden, which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can learn a lot in the Quran. 
from paying attention to the names that Allah uses at the end of the ayat. He makes a point, he mentions his names, and the names have a meaning, an emphasis to the point that he's trying to tell you. All right, we're back. Alhamdulillah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more knowledgeable than you are. Who is on the right path? And he is more knowledgeable of who is astray. Then Allah says, he says, fa, okay, and fa means ta'qib, okay, it means that the thing that's about to come is built upon what was just mentioned. But he changes topic, which is always really interesting. Pay attention. You want to have a deeper relationship with the Quran? Pay attention to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes topic. There is a relationship there that he wants you to think about. What's the connection? And he says, He says, then eat of the meat, he's saying, what Allah's name has been mentioned over if you believe in his signs. If you are believers in his signs, what on earth is Allah talking about? Why would he suddenly start talking about meat? Any ideas? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving an intro to a section where he's about to criticize the eating habits of the Quraysh, okay? Because the Quraysh, we have the opposite problem <laughs> in 2023 in America. We want everything to be halal, right? Chick-fil-A and whatever and all this other stuff. We want to eat everything. You know, just say bismillah, right? That's what everybody says, right? You go to the store, subhanAllah. Even if it's a, even if it's a, a Muslim shop or a Muslim owns it, you say, Akhi, is this meat halal? He said, yeah, say bismillah, it's halal. <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah, it's true, you find that here. So the Quraysh had the opposite problem. Okay? It wasn't about permissibility. They weren't saying that everything was permissible. They, were, they had lots of taboos. They say, no, that's haram for you. This is haram for you. This is only for men. This is only for women. This is only, we're only allowed to, if we mark the animal with this sort of thing, you can't eat it, it's sacred. They had all these restrictions and superstitions. Allah's going to mention in a page or two. Okay, so he's introducing this topic by saying, فَكُلُوا He's saying, eat, I'm telling you to eat. مِمَّا ذُكِرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ If Allah's name is mentioned over it, then eat it. Don't worry about these past superstitions. Don't think that these people are more pious because they've made up rules and taboos, right? Sometimes we look at people. I used to think this when I, before I was a Muslim. I was still kind of like coming back to faith, but I wasn't sure if it was going to be Christianity or, or whatever. And I used to look at the Catholics. You guys know the difference between the Catholics and the Protestants. The Catholics have all these saints. Every single day is specified for a saint. This day, Tuesday, December 22nd is for Saint Kither. And this, the April 21st is Saint Kither, Kither. They have all, every single day of the calendar, they have a saint. And every single saint has some sort of quality. Oh, this is the saint of finding lost things. I had a, an in-law that once told me, oh, well, you know, as Catholics, if we lose something, we pray to Saint Anthony. He's the saint of lost things. I said, wow, that's great. Who did Saint Anthony pray to when he lost something, right? He prayed to Allah. And so somebody who doesn't have a lot of faith to go off of, they might look at this and say, wow, look at this. This is amazing. All oh, this religion. They have so many, you know, rituals. They have so much they, they believe in. No, no, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who's best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows who's guided and who's not. So somebody could come into this situation and look at the Quraysh and they have all these taboos. Like, oh, no, you can't eat that. You can't eat that. I had once, I had someone tell me once that I couldn't cut my fingernails on the street in Medina. I was like, what's your deal? Like, like, what's the, what's your evidence? He's like, no, no, the jinn eat it. And then all this other stuff. I said, Akhi, 
where did you hear this? The, oh, you know, I heard it from my grandma. We don't just go based off of dhan. We don't just go based off of conjecture. This was a student in the Islamic University of Medina. Yeah. I said, Akhi, well, you have to have dalil. You can't just talk out your neck about, about this and that. You have to have evidence. The Quraysh didn't have evidence. They were making stuff up. You can't eat this. You can't eat that. This is special for this month. This is special for that. Somebody who doesn't know any better, they think, wow, these people must be really pious. These people must be really religious and close to Allah. Allah says, no, don't follow the majority. You follow the majority, you're going to go astray and eat. He says, eat from whatever Allah's name is mentioned over if you believe in his signs. Don't be fooled by this false piety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the one who is giving the sharia. People don't get to make it up. He's the one who gets to decide what's really pleasing to him and what's not, right? If I said, okay, I want to make Allah happy today, I'm going to go and stand out in the sun for five hours. Where did I get that, Dalil? Where did I, that's ibadah? Who said? The definition of ibadah is something that Allah is pleased with. Who gets to decide what's Allah, what Allah is pleased with? Allah gets to decide. I don't get to decide. I can't just make it up as I go along. And that's what the Quraysh were doing. They were making up as they went along. And the irony is, and we'll see it later on, the, the Quraysh were making up these things to compensate for the things that they weren't doing. They were in alcohol. They were in gambling. They were burying their daughters. They were doing all this bad stuff and they felt guilty. And so they overcompensated on this other side that was easy for them. Camels and food and things like that. Anyway, so Allah then is going to challenge the believers. He says, okay, what's wrong with you that you won't eat? Okay, Allah is saying, what's wrong with you? He, first, he's like saying, okay, eat, go ahead, be free. Eat of what Allah's name has been mentioned over. And what's wrong with you that you don't? You think that you're more pious than Allah? You think that you have rules that Allah doesn't have? So some people, they think that, well, the cautious, the most cautious opinion is always the best. It's not always true. The most cautious opinion, are you making, are you putting limits that Allah didn't put? Are you introducing things into the religion, restrictions that Allah didn't put? This doesn't make you more pious. This doesn't make you more God conscious. Allah challenges us. What is wrong with you that you don't eat what Allah's name has been mentioned over, obviously, at the moment of slaughter? And Allah has already spelled out for you everything that's haram. There's nothing left. There's nothing he let you in the dark about. There's nothing that he didn't already tell you about. Except, of course, if you're in uh, dire necessity. وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا no, the majority of them are following their desires, their attachments with no knowledge, no license, no authority that Allah gave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more knowledgeable of those who have gone astray. Now we do it on time. All right, we're good. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gives us advice. Leave sin, ithm, both the obvious sin and the hidden sin. The context here. Okay, everybody knows the, the obvious sin. Okay, killing somebody, drinking, stealing, gambling, all these sorts of things. What are the hidden sins? They're, first of all, sins that are hidden away that people don't see. But they're also the introduction of these phony regulations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't reveal. Is this hidden sin? Yes, it is. You're speaking for Allah. Something that he didn't say. And Allah is going to have some very strong words for that type of person in just a bit. <inaudible> Those who have earned sin, then they're going to get what they deserve. And don't eat, this is more relevant to us for fiqh, don't eat anything, meaning meat, that has not had Allah's name pronounced over it. Okay, let that sit for a second. Don't eat any meat 
that Allah's name has not been pronounced over it. Okay? Just say Bismillah, brother. Shat al farq I only see a big difference between the attitude on the street and then what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says right here in the Quran, clear as day. Wa in la fisq. And certainly that to eat meat that hasn't had Allah's name pronounced over it at the time of slaughter is fisk. Is disobedience. Fesaka means khuruj. It means leaving Allah's obedience. Wa in shayatina la yuhuna ila awliyaihim liujadilukum Allah. Allah says that the devils and the demons, they inspire their accomplices and their friends so that they argue with you. Don't we have arguments about food? Oh, but brother, don't be too hard. Oh, but brother, don't be too strict. Just say Bismillah and eat it. It's going to be okay. Allah says that the devils inspire one another to argue with you about this issue. It's not disobedience. It's not a big deal. Come on, brother. We're in America. It's hard. You know, I can't find. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you obey, if you were to obey, it's a hypothetical. If you were to obey these devils, then you would certainly be guilty of shirk. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gets to decide. We can't introduce our own rules. We can't speak for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said something in the Quran, and the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam had said something in the hadith, and then we come along after that and say, oh, you know, it's not that big of a deal. In direct contradiction, we're not talking about valid khilaf or things like that, in direct contradiction to what Allah and the Prophet alayhi salam said. Mukhif. It's a very, very scary thing. It would be better if we said, yes, that's what Allah said, but I'm weak. At least then we admit that we're sinning, but we're not trying to change Allah's deen. Two different things. We can sin. Everybody can sin. Everybody can do wrong. And say, yeah, you know, I'm not the best Muslim. I'm trying to get better. And, you know, that's one thing. But then to try to change Allah's deen is something else. To say, no, 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 there's nothing in the Quran that says that. Akhi, have you read the whole Quran? You know that there's nothing in the Quran that says that. How easy some people say that. You know how many people say that the hijab isn't in the Quran these days? There's no ayah about the hijab, they say. Do you know what sort of punishment is in store for a person who lies about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The hijab is not mentioned in the Quran. You've condemned yourself. That's i'tiraf. You just confessed against yourself. You don't need to open your mouth anymore. Your ignorance is on display. And if you don't repent, then you've got something really, really scary coming to you. Fear Allah. At least, at least be humble and say, I'm not aware of anything. To say, Allah never said something. Or it's not in the Quran. At least have the humility to say, as far as I understand, or I didn't see it, or to my knowledge, or anything like this. But no. Because the people who follow their ahwa the people who follow their agendas and their desires, they don't have that humility in the first place. If they had that humility in the first place, they wouldn't be trying to change Allah's deen or speak for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْسَ بِخَارِجٍ مِّنْهَا he gives us an example. He gives us a parable. Is the person who used to be dead and Allah brings him back to life and gives to them light and he walks by that light among the people. Is he like somebody who's wandering around in the darkness and he can't get out? The person who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given guidance to is not equal to the person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given guidance to. They are not the same. Kadharika. And in that way we beautify for the people of kufr that which they do. These are the ways, Allah just said it on the last page, how the demons and the devils both of people and of jinn, they beautify sin for people. 
They say, oh, Islam is ease. Take it easy, brother. Don't be too extreme. You're praying five times a day? Don't be too extreme, brother. You want to cover your hair, sister? Don't be so extreme. You want to make sure that your meat had Allah's name pronounced over it? Don't be so extreme, brother. This is the way that the devils bring you down. This is the way that sin is made beautiful to us by being repackaged as tolerance and enlightenment and ease and all these sorts of things. And in this way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided that every qarya, every village, every town, every city is going to have its fair share of criminals. Its fair share of misguidance, people who are trying to misguide the people. لِيَمْكُرُوا فِيهَا To plot therein. To make schemes, to make plans. How are we going to get the Muslims to break up and split up and be disunited? How are we going to make the Muslim youth relinquish part of their deen? How are we going to get them to think that Islam is just an identity just like every other identity? Or think that it's my body, it's my choice. Or to think that it's yours to decide what gender you are or what sexuality you are. How are we going to do it? Let's put them on a flyer. Let's give them anybody who commits that. Let's give them a speaking tour. Let's give them a book deal. Let's put their name up in lights. Yes, this happens. وَمَا يَمْكُرُونَ إِلَّا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ Allah. Allah says they plot and they plan, but in reality, they're only planning their own demise and they don't even feel it. You can't beat Allah. Undisputed champion. Undefeated. Never going to lose. And yet people in their arrogance think that they can plan and outsmart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will see. We will see. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا جَاءَتْهُمْ آيَةٌ قَالُوا لَن نُؤْمِنَ حَتَّى نُؤْتَى مِثْلَ مَا أُوْتِيَ رُسُلُ اللَّهِ If they are given an ayah, if they're given a sign or a miracle or it comes to them, they say, this is one of their excuses, we will not believe in it until we are given similar to that which the prophets of Allah have been given. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds, Allahu a'lamu haythu yaja'alu risalatah Allah knows best who to give his message to. This is one of the many instances that people of arrogance expose themselves because they demonstrate that they think that they should be calling the shots. They think that they know best. This was a common thing that the Quraysh used to do. If this were true, why weren't we the first ones to believe in it? If this were true, why wasn't it sound, sent down to Abu Sufyan or Abu Lahab or any of these guys that we think should have been sent down? You're missing the whole point. Islam literally means submission. The whole point is that it's going to defy some of your expectations. Religion, faith is not about telling you everything you want to hear. It's not about affirming everything you already believe, your assessments. You thought so-and-so is the best person. Allah is here to tell you, actually, it's this guy over here. And you have now a moral choice to make. Are you going to humble yourself and say, oh, okay, now I understand? Or are you going to say, this can't be true because it's not what I already thought? Islam is here to challenge us. And Allah, Azza wa Jal, is here to correct us. Allah knows best who to give his message to. So you see, بُلَّذِينَ أَجْرَمُوا سَغَارٌ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَعَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَمْكُرُونَ the people who conspired, the criminals, are in for a very severe punishment by that which they used to plot and plan. And may Allah protect us and guide us and give us faith. Ami. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayka. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.